What's going on, y'all? So listen. Child, what is going on? We are back. We are back finally for part three of the Real Housewives of Potomac season seven reunion baby if it ain't got the energy that it usually has that's because ashley is tired of this show and i'm ready to move on okay so we pick up and let me just tell you this if the 90 minutes of this episode because i'm literally at the very beginning y'all know how i record on commercial breaks if the 90 minutes is a 30 minutes little interview with robin and the girl I'm, I'm not talking about that because we didn't brand it in the hills we didn't brand it in the ground we already know what's up so if this review is the regular length that's just what it is and if you don't hear nothing talking about robin and wine i don't care okay moving on that was just a warning just in case you know what i'm saying so we get up into the episode and it picks up where i left off last week girl with jackson coming in on there um and Mia, let me tell you something. <laughs> I just don't understand how is it that your friendship breaks up. A friendship that y'all been friends since you was 15 years old. Now, according to Mia, Mia like what, 35, 36, something like that. So, you have like a 20-year friendship that you just messed up by being on TV for like two seconds. Jacqueline wasn't even on here for like a full season. And as soon as she got on here, baby, everything just started falling apart. And I'm like, was y'all having issues prior to you getting on here? Because I'm just really confused as to how this friendship just started falling apart so quickly, so fast, as soon as Jacqueline hit the scene. Because as soon as that, y'all got to go back and look at it. As soon as Jacqueline hit the scene on this season, Mia just really wasn't here for it. It was like, dog, did you know that she was going to be on here or whatever? Because I just don't understand. But anyway, we get up into it, and it picked up where it left off last week when Jacqueline said she got receipts, and Mia said she got receipts or whatever. She was like, girl, you weren't being no good friend when you sent that group track, that group uh, chat, uh, text or whatever, talking about some, my house in foreclosure, I'm in unemployment, I got food stamp. Meanwhile, your house and your whole family business is in shambles. I said, Oh, okay, Jacqueline, bring the heat, girl. Mia took out a box or a bike. I don't know what it was. It was a box or whatever, but that's it. And she said, but uh, what they say, Pandora's box. Girl, ain't nothing up in uh, Pandora's box. Mia opened up that box and said, you know what? I'm not even going to use what's up in here because you ain't had nothing up in there. And if you had papers up in there, baby, the papers was blank. Okay, you went and got some copy paper that ain't had nothing on there. All right, I said, so what was the point? What was the point? Meanwhile, Mia had, not Mia, but Jacqueline had pulled out stuff. Girl, when Jacqueline was about to go in, Mia was still talking. <laughs> and Wendy said, shh. I said, damn. And she shut up. She shut up. I said, first of all, Wendy, you a grown woman. You won't hush and shush no other grown woman, okay? But in this case, I laughed at that because Mia didn't say nothing when Wendy said that. I said, girl, you gonna let that lady shush you like that? Oh, all right. Now, see, at first, Wendy and Jacqueline didn't really get along because Jacqueline was, um, doing, uh, uh, Mia's little dirty bit and, you know, trying to be a little loyal friend or whatever, but then ever since they fell out, like, they, they seem like they good girlfriends. I ain't going to say good girlfriends, but, you know, they cool because Wendy wanted to take up all the tea. Truth be told, I would have been sitting there doing the same thing. You want to say something? Put it out there. Girl, she said, first of all, you up here talking about some you was with my mama on Mother's Day. You were not with my mother on Mother's Day. She, here go Mia. Um, well, what I meant to say is I was with her when actually I was on the phone with her for an hour. I said with and on the phone is two different things. Now, when we say with, that means we are in people's physical presence, okay? That is what that means. You said you was with. You did not say you was ring, ring, ring on the phone or on FaceTime with her. Neither that, that that's just not it, okay? I mean, you are a liar. You've been lying this whole season. And then you're going to put that tweet up talking about something. You don't want nobody to call you a liar and all this stuff. Because, girl, you made your whole reputation about being a liar. So, how you going to be upset about that? You did it to yourself, ma'am. Okay? Meanwhile, you get, um, uh, she said, you know, oh, what she say? Girl, I forget. She said that about her. She said, you lying about you being a CEO. 
um gordon had to make you get an ein girl i was just like damn it's just a lot that she was just putting out there you lied about this whole situation about her owning her porsche or whatever like him helping her own her porsche and all that stuff and you know uh it was basically a storyline and and i think um she was like i think either mia said it or one of them said it. she was like i just needed to give her a storyline or whatever she needed something for a storyline baby a storyline about you possibly fucking your husband, her possibly doing something with your husband, that just don't make no sense. And even Wendy said, did y'all have sex together or did y'all have a relationship together? She said, no, girl, we ain't had nothing. I ain't never do nothing with Gordon or whatever. You know, the other girls was like, I mean, it was kind of tittering, tottering on that, implying that y'all had something going on. And it was like, no, it was just a storyline type of situation. I said, girl, we knew it. We knew it. But at the same time, I don't know. It's too much animosity to be, like, for them to fall out that quickly. And they like, damn, did y'all share something in between or whatever? Because it was just too quick. And it was just really random the way that all of this happened. I ain't never really seen nothing like this happen. As far as I can remember, when a friend of a friend, a friend of a housewife come onto the show, and then they just completely fall out instantly because that's how quick it was it wasn't like you know 15 episodes in it was like literally quick and i'm just sitting here like damn y'all i'm sure the child ain't click clack and you know what i don't i don't know i don't know and she was like you talking about me bitch you up here talking about me and my house at least i got a house i said oh <laughs> Let me tell you something. Jacqueline was getting her together and the stuff wasn't even all that like, ooh, type of thing. You want to know what made it like that? Because Wendy kept on, ooh, uh, ooh. Because I was like, okay, Jacqueline, these little receipts or whatever, it's cute because she blew up the text messages and everything. Every time she said something, Mia was trying to come back with a lie. She was like, you know, they said, why are you up here talking about her? And she needs to close her legs to marry men and all this stuff. Shouldn't that have been something that you should have told her privately? That's what a viewer question was. She was like, somebody said, no, we on a reality show. And then she was like, here come Mia. Well, the reason that I said that was because she was the only one out of the girls. Maybe it was somebody else I think said that they knew too. That Gordon was uh, a survivor of prostate cancer or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, girl, what does that have to do with you telling her to close her legs to marry men? Okay. So you up here trying to talk, you trying to make it seem like she was trying to talk about Je uh, uh, Gordon and basically his impotence. You trying to say that your man dick don't work. Okay, and then let me tell you something. I don't understand how these newbies be coming up on this show and y'all just be embarrassing y'all husbands like this, okay? Ain't no way in heck you finna get me this early in the seasons, okay? In, in, this early in my tenure on the show that I'm finna put my man stuff out there or whoever I'm with out there and say that his dick don't work because that's basically what it boiled down to. You said he had prostate cancer. You said he can do some things sometimes. He can't do no thing. So either his dick don't work or he got a little bit of erectile dysfunction because of the prostate situation. Meanwhile, you was up here all last season and everything else talking about how y'all be getting it in so much or whatever. Truth be told, you really wasn't because it really wasn't working. It was more like this than like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, girl, what? I said, child, man, you just a liar, okay? And I'm sitting here like, well, how you gonna tell her not to sleep with married men but you got up on the show and you told us that you fucked Gordon on the beach of Miami when he was married and not to you she was like but yes but yes it's because i owned it it's because i owned it i just want her to own her girl i'm sitting here like and what will it do for you what will it do girl get out of here okay um jacqueline wound up leaving the show and that was basically it then we see some shit with sharice getting ready and all that stuff she talked about something she ready girl <laughs> I ain't got time for it. Sharice, y'all seen that picture of her? Y'all seen the picture of her, Robin, Giselle, Ashley, and um, Mia together looking like the token colored in the picture. I'm sorry to say it like that, but that's just what it was because then they did the little TikTok thing or whatever. And I was just like, wow, y'all so... I feel so sorry for black people that ain't got rhythm. 
And that was a whole picture full of biracial people. Girl, you know, I was just like, that's y'all uh, Karen said picking in and just taking over. I don't know what the heck that was that Robin was doing. I just don't understand what was happening in the whole situation. I said, now the rhythm in the bunch, all right? Giselle look cute, though. I ain't gonna lie. She look decent. Giselle been looking a little bit... Do I want to give her all of that? No, because I really don't find Giselle attractive like that she's not ugly i just don't find her attractive to myself but hey it is what it is um it is what it is i was just looking at them like sharice ain't nobody scared of you ain't nobody scared of you okay like let's let's get it over y'all heard that shit that katie ross did did y'all see that tweet that she put andy you messed up if you was gonna bring sharice back just to get at karen and get karen a little bit of a storyline you should have brought um freaking katie ross back okay mama been trying to get her job back for a long time and and and, and, and i just need you to go ahead and give it back to her that's what you need to do because mama said Mama said out of her mouth and tweeted this shit yesterday. I said, now, girlfriend, what is this? She basically was talking about um, maybe next season on Real Housewives of Potomac, they will ask Sharice Jordan at it, the girl, about the night we had sex and I laughed for her so she could get her settlement. Maybe I'm not better, just saying, or maybe she's so entertaining we will be amazing ass dot 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 never let me tell you this katie what else katie got okay katie girl what you got bitch spill it andy put it back on the show because i need that type of chaos okay katie is all over the goddamn place and i need it on the show child they didn't brought sharice out first of all sharice come out and she looks so stuffed and uncomfortable or whatever but hey I just didn't understand the part about how she sat down trying to fix her dress only to get back up to kiss Andy, give him a hug and all of that. Girl, anyway, I just <laughs> I just don't have it for Sharice. I'm just sorry. I'm not interested on what she been up to, the finalization of her divorce. Um, her and Robin being friends because their husband were in the NBA coaching and, uh, um, and player. Who cares? So we get into the whole situation about Karen and her. Baby, at the end of the day, whether Karen got the dates mixed up or a timeline mixed up, which truth be told, it's a possibility because it's Karen. Let's just be honest right there. Put that to the side. Sharice getting on here, you know, Andy had to clear up the fact that, you know, um, he didn't bring Sharice on to take her down. Sharice didn't call him to get back on the show. Uh, actually, he they they were the one that reached out to Sharice to bring her back. And, you know, Giselle and them had to, well, they had to put out there that the only people outside of, I think it was Robin that said that, the only people outside of, and it was Mia that said, let me go back before somebody try to correct me. It was Mia that was the one that told Jacqueline that Gordon told her to get an EIN, okay? That was that. But let's get back on this. Robin said, outside of the Wendy and Karen, everybody likes Sharice, okay? And I was just sitting here like, okay, and Okay, and so y'all bring a person back, and I don't care what nobody says. Sharice, if this is your way of coming back, whether somebody brought you back or somebody, you know, um, you wanted to be there or whatever, the way that they started it off was as if you really had a storyline. You had no storyline. Granted, you a friend of, okay? You literally came back to cause chaos because if you didn't come back to take down Karen, what else were you there for? Because everything that was being said was about Karen. OK, in your relationship, you literally got on this show and you played yourself to make it seem as if you were so desperate to understand why you don't um, Karen don't rock with you. Why do you care if a person is showing me that I don't care about you, that I'm going to give them that same energy? I am not going to waste the time that I have after I've been away from, you know, TV and in the public view like this for four freaking years and come back and be so hyper focused on another person that has shown that they don't give a damn about me and then for the other ladies to be like well you let her come to your 55th birthday and you let her come to this or whatever so what she is 59 
okay? And at the end of the day, the lady was being cordial because she was on goddamn camera, but y'all kept on badgering, and she just had to put the truth out there. She don't fuck with Sharice, okay? And if you can't take it, that's on you. She don't have to tell her or anybody else why she don't mess with you, okay? Whatever it is, she got her reasons, and that's just what it is, okay? And at the end of the day, they are not going to be friends. They are not going to be associates. They are not going to be talking on the phone and all that stuff, and it should not be that big a deal. Because if it's going to be a big of a deal that Karen and Sharice don't talk, then Giselle and Robin, how come y'all don't talk and want to uh, make things right with Wendy? What is your main issue? Because at this point, we don't know. We don't know, all right? Because it can't just be about what happened in the last season because, oh, my God, you could have got over that. You didn't got over worse, especially you and Gis you, Giselle, with Karen. Y'all done talked so much crap about you. She done called you all type of sluts and whores and all this, but you can't be cool with uh, um, Wendy. Like, come on, come on. You can't be cordial. Not let me, not, not, let me, not, not let me say cool. Let me say cordial. Meaning when you see her, it's not a nasty remark. It's not you being, uh, showing thorns, little shade with your eyes or whatever, your facial expressions and all this stuff and getting on a reunion saying, I just don't like her, bitch. You know what I'm saying? So, so why can't you do the same thing? And I'm sorry if I sound like I just don't, I just don't care about this segment because at this point it's like, what is the reason? Sharice, I don't care what nobody says. You literally came on here and you just spent your time talking about how much you don't like or, you know, you trying to understand why this lady don't like you. Andy talking about some. If somebody uh, went out their way and came to a funeral or whatever, I would have felt like that's they putting forth the effort. I don't care if you come to a funeral. Somebody told me you ain't got to be invited to a funeral. You could just pop up. I did not know that. I've ne I've been to a funeral, but I was invited. The only reason why I've been to the funeral is because it was my family member. So, of course, I was automatically going to be there. But other than that, I haven't been to a funeral like that. So, I wouldn't know. I don't know if they give out invitations or not. I don't know how that thing works, okay? But at the end of the day, just because somebody shows up to an event does not mean that automatically I'm going to be like, oh, okay, you showed up, you showed support or whatever, so therefore we cool again, we can try again. No. And we don't know anything else that went on in between that. And it doesn't matter because Karen don't want to be the girlfriend and she shouldn't have to explain herself to people that don't give a damn. Okay, why does it matter to you? Why do you need to know a reason? Give us a reason, Robin and Giselle, why you're not friends with Wendy. And then Karen will give you a reason why she don't fuck with Chrissy, uh, what that bitch name. Okay, like, right, girl, I'm just over. I don't even want to discuss this bitch. I'm sorry, because we ran this shit down to the ground, you know, and so because she don't want to be your friend, because a lot of this stuff you want to put so-called tea about her fucking this person, this person, that person, girl, as if you ain't got nothing underneath your skeletons. Okay, let's put your skeletons out there, Sharice. Please get Katie on the line. Get Katie on the line. Now, I can't tell if Katie is telling the truth about them fucking, but at the same time, Katie has been very vocal, very vocal. So, I just want to know what mama got to pull up. If you want to pull up some stuff on everybody else, baby, pull up some stuff on her too, okay? Let's do that tit for tat type of situation, and then that would have made the shit more interesting. Then I'd probably be invested, but girl, I just don't care. I don't. And it ain't even because it's Karen. If 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 Sharice would have came on here trying to be cool with this person or that person and they didn't, girl, I wouldn't care. Cause if they don't want to be cool with you, they don't have to. And if they don't want to give a reason, they don't have to. They don't have to. If Wendy, girl, anyway, moving on from that. Moving on, y'all already get it. So then, um, basically, Sharice basically said a lot of the stuff that she was. What I got from this is. Sharice was saying stuff about her, about Karen, you know, sleeping with the waitress and doing stuff, or, or the waiter, I should say, and, you know, having sex up in the uh, bathroom and all that stuff just because she was hurt because Karen was coming at her so-called character and integrity and all that stuff, whatever. So, basically, Sharice was up here telling lies and rumors. All the stuff that she was saying was lies, okay? And then, you know, Wendy said, it's so crazy how... um. People don't want people saying rumors and stuff about them, but yet they'll go back and repeat a rumor about other people. That's what they'll do on this cast. And that's literally what it is. And then, you know, 
you got Robin trying to come out and say, well, the stuff that we heard, we don't get our stuff from off the blogs. We get it off of from um, people that's actually uh, in the neighborhood or whatever in the town that know us and know you or whatever and putting it out there. And I'm sitting here like, okay, but that's still spreading a rumor whether you get it from a person that you claim know something. Because 9 out of 10, unless that person actually saw what went down with whoever the rumor is about, they're probably getting that from somebody else. And that is the danger with rumors that do have not come out and, and, and said anything about it as if it was factual. It's nothing that came out that proved that it factually happened. You know what I'm saying? It's not a first-hand experience. You're getting it from somebody that probably got it from somebody else. And that is very dangerous. And that is very harmful to a person's reputation. And I'm putting that out there, not just because of this situation with Sharice, but for all of these housewives. Because if you go back and you look at, I don't care which franchise and which city of the franchise that you see, this goes on a lot. Where they repeat rumors that 9 out of 10 aren't even true and that just mess up friendships that mess up relationships that mess up ret reputations and it's like y'all don't get enough of this y'all don't get enough of the he say she say gossip and granted we can get a good season without you putting these fake rumors out there like that you know what i'm saying and then mia you trying to say the same thing and it's like girl <sighs> The rumor about her being out with somebody that works in a restaurant or whatever. Remember when Mia told her that and, and, and Karen was like, girl, please. Now, all of a sudden, Mia said it's a family member that knew or something like that. She not going to get too deep into it. But if it's a rumor and you said it's not true, why you getting mad? Baby, I'm going to get mad if you presenting stuff to me as if it's a fact. And that's the difference between with, uh, what Mia was doing. Mia was giving it to Karen like it was a fact. And how dare you tell somebody not to get mad when you just seen other people just coming at me already and now you're going to pile on and now you want to tell me don't get mad if it's a rumor. Why would you get mad? I mean, you got Wendy up here telling me that I fuck for lobsters and Wendy said shrimp scampi too. <laughs> Now, see, Mia, you different, bitch. You different. You 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 don't really care about nothing, okay? Because, baby, your reputation has already been um, fucked up and everything, okay? You have been proven to be a liar. And I'm just sitting here like, now, y'all know that the girl lied. So, why would y'all even try to listen to anything that come out of Mia's mouth at this point? All right? That's what somebody said. You said that Wendy's love with Peter. You said that this happened. You said that that happened. You lied on your friend Jacqueline. Girl, I would never believe anything that comes out of your mouth at this point. You know, it, it, it's just ridiculous. And then Robin talking about some, you know, because um, Karen, just she just don't want nobody to say uh, what they know or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, are you serious? Robin, you have been full of nothing but contradictions and hypocrisy on this whole stage. Because for you to sit up here and to come at Karen and anybody else that don't put their stuff out on camera and don't put it out on the show or whatever and don't discuss their relationship, their things and all that stuff. But yet you kept your business to yourself and released it after the reunion. And you ain't want nobody who already knew, a.k.a. Giselle. I'm pretty sure Ashley had an inkling what was going on because that's what was going around as well. But you trying to make it seem like everybody else uh, having a problem putting their stuff out there. But yet, you the one that didn't put none of your shit out there about Juan cheating and fucking around on you. And this whole investigation that he got going on into him at that university. Uh. Uh. Okay. Okay, girl. Get out of here. Shut up. So then we get into Robin and her situation and all of her lies or whatever. Um, She got married. They signed a prenup. It's a 50-50 type of thing. So if they break up, he can't get none of her business. And whatever they brought into the relationship is 50-50. Okay, fine. Um, they didn't put the infidelity clause up in there because according to her, she thought about it. Cause what if something, if she do something, then it can be used against her as well. I said, girl, whatever the whole situation about, um, Karen being obsessed with, uh, cause I did say that. I did say that. I said, girl, why do you care so much whether or not this lady get married or not? Because it do look like you obsessing over it. And a um, viewer had asked that question. And Karen admitted, yeah, I was obsessing over it. But it's just like, girl, you kept on saying that you're going to get married. Then you said it's going to be an intimate marriage. And then wedding. And then this didn't happen. And then you've been saying this forever, whatever. But at the end of the day, I still feel a 
was, though. You know, Karen did a little bit much, but I understood because, you know, them two don't get along, and we get it. We get it. Um, But it still was a bit much. Like, girl, the way that people was badgering you about how come you don't, you're not cool with Sharice, I felt it was somewhat the same way she was doing to Robin about how come she not married or whatever. Like, girl, let it go. It ain't none of your business. If you get married, they get married. If not, not. Okay? The whole situation about, you know, um, Robin knowing that Juan was cheating with somebody that looked like Karen in Georgetown and all that stuff stuff and you know again the rumor situation that came up and like I said everybody needs to stop repeating rumors unless they actually saw the stuff and that's what kind of what Robin said I agree but we're going to make an exception right about now because technically speaking the people that said that Juan was cheating they weren't lying because it came out that Juan was cheating okay moving on from that Giselle was a little bit hurt that she didn't get called to come down there to the wedding but hey it is what it is we've talked about the little fun day situation and Miss Robin still didn't get it Miss Robin you still did not get it even after, I'm pretty sure you didn't seen some of the show. I'm pretty sure you have seen some of the social media posts or whatever. And you mean to tell me that you didn't understand how come, first of all, they said the shit was cheap as hell. Somebody said, did you pay, how much did it cost? $15 for you to put that together? <laughs> I said, not $15, girl. You couldn't even give her $40. You said $15. She said it was a last minute thing. And um, they was like... Why would you think that it was okay to invite Wendy's kids and not her to the fun day situation, giving y'all situation? You know what I'm saying? And she was like, you know, she just didn't think it was a problem because if she wasn't getting along with Wendy or, or Wendy had a situation or whatever and she invited the kids and everybody, she would be okay with her kids going over there with Wendy um, without her. And I said, that's bullshit. That's a lie. All right. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if my kid, if I'm not invited and we have gotten into it and we got issues, you're not being around my children. You're not being around the people that are closest to me, which is my kids. You're not going to be around them at any time. I don't know if you're going to watch them. I don't know if somebody else going to watch them. I don't know if something going to pop off and I'm not there. No, you would not bring your kids to somebody that you don't get along with. So let's stop playing. And you know you was wrong. Okay? You, you, you was just ignorant with the shit. All right? You was trying trying to be funny and like Wendy said you gonna ask somebody that ain't never really been around my kids if they can come pick up my kids and come play auntie to them at the fun day stitch girl get out of here get out of here then they brought up the whole oh they finally brought up the wine in situation with his uh you know um school or whatever and basically I didn't like the response to way that Robin said it because it's showing that you really don't take this serious. And to me, it was like um, the way people don't take sexual assault, sexual harassment um, towards men seriously. If it's not a woman being sexually harassed, oh, we're going to we're going to take that serious. But when it comes to men being sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, it's not taken as serious. And the reason why I said that was because of the way that she so lackadaisical said, you know, I can't really get into that because of the lawsuit and all that. Da, 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 da. I was like, oh, that shows that you really don't care. And then for you to come out and say, all I can say is that. Um, what's being said about Juan is a lie. Basically, this is not true. And Juan took care of the situation the way that I know that he would have took care of the situation if it was our own kid. I said, girl, stop playing. So basically, you trying to get up here in so many words without saying it and say that the victim was lying. Because then Andy said, so you're saying that he's not telling the truth. And she was like, no, I believe that, you know, the situation that happened between him and the other guy happened or whatever. But they putting Juan's name out there and using his name basically as clickbait, click, clickbait. And it ain't had nothing to do with him. If it ain't had nothing to do with him, and if it could easily be disproved, then it would have been easily disproved. And it would never been mentioned his name. Because Juan ain't nobody important like that. Truth be told. Truth be told. Okay? He didn't report it. He was the coach. He's involved in it. Okay? So, therefore, that's why he... That's why it, that's, a, that's why it's being said. And it ain't clickbait, baby. And basically, what you're trying to say is the guy is lying on Juan and his part on here. You're calling the victim a fucking liar. I don't like that. 
another reason why I don't fuck with this bitch. Girl, get the hell away from us. So now the husbands come out there, okay? And you can clearly tell because backstage, girl, they was asking Chris, you know, you good to be here? Listen, Chris ain't said nothing. Chris, Chris, I, I, this is what I was waiting for for part three because I just want Chris to give vindication. And truth be told, I won't be surprised if he don't because Giselle is just that type of evil bitch. And the fact that, you know, when it comes to this franchise, this particular city, like... I just don't understand how come they just don't punish people for their reckless behavior. They let Michael stay on and Michael had people saying things against him, proof of things that was happening, um, situations uh, from crew members saying that he was touching them inappropriately and all of this stuff or whatever. And other things, nothing was done about that. He was still allowed to film. You got Giselle coming on here, accusing a man um, making a man, be, uh, putting it out there that somebody made her feel com uncomfortable and then going off and saying that he was going around grabbing p women butts and stuff like that at Karen's party, okay? And there's nothing being done about that. But yet you got Michael Darby. Michael Darby, you got your nerves, okay? At the end of the day, um, Candace has said some things about you acting inappropriately, but yet a lot of people have said some things about you doing the same darn thing, okay? Being inappropriate, um, that dude, you saw the guy that came up there to BravoCon and who put out there and said that he was fucking around with you? Because if you gonna sue Candace for saying that you was sucking somebody dick, I hope you suing old boy too. You ain't going to win it, you know what I'm saying? Because especially if they going to bring in Karis. Well, girl, please. Anyway, that's why I ain't even bother talking about it because it ain't even worth it. But they get the men out there. You know, of course, Ray going to be there. He's always there. Moving on past that one. Juan ain't there because apparently he got to work. The way Karen was like. <laughs> Robin caught it and Robin said I said, girl, well, every time for like the what past two, three for you gets, he has to work. He has to work. Girl, basically, wine don't like being out there because wine don't like the way things go. Wine don't like the show. Wine don't like the arguments that be happening with the women, especially about the men and all that stuff. He just don't like it. And I was like, well, if you don't give them um a reason to talk about you, then it won't be happening. So what's the issue? But anyway, moving on from that, we talk about Gordon. Gordon, how does it feel, Um, you know, having to go through your wife's health scare on this season? Gordon started crying like, and I'm sorry to sound insensitive because after all we know, he started crying like the lady was about to die and she literally did get a cancer diagnosis and baby, that ain't even what it was. Girl, truth be told, I really do feel like what was going on with me is the fact that, you know, all of the surgeries and stuff that she had in her body is just rejecting or reacting to it finally. That's just what it is. That's what I feel like was going on. Um, moving on from that, he ain't never slept with none of her friends. Okay, we don't care. But what we came here for was the Chris situation. But prior to that, they gave Eddie props, Eddie and Wendy props for the way that they handled the Happy Eddie situation. And that just, like the viewer said, it shows that they solid in their relationship. Because they cracked the up at that. And that was funny. Each and every time I see it in the way that they bust out in unison, it's hilarious, Okay. And yeah, Wendy be using some of his money, okay? And she was like, thank you. We already knew that, you know? Um, Moving on from that, we get into the main event right about now. The whole situation with Chris. Chris was about to get up there, you know, and you could just tell he was pissed and he was trying to hold back. And, you know, Andy was like, you haven't said anything. This is your time to say your piece. And his whole thing was... Let's just say, because according to you, I was the one who told you, let's go into your room. Ask, could we go into your room? And I'm going to give you a hypothetical and say, let's say that that happened, which it didn't. But let's say that that happened. So if I take you, you do take me to your room because you felt as though your team was going to be in there. And then you go in there and you realize that your team is not in there. How come at that very moment that you as a grown woman can see that your team is not there and it was going to be an issue for you and you was going to feel the way that you feel afterwards, what you're feeling now. How come you didn't just say, 
can we talk about this later or can we go out into the hallway and talk about this? And that is what I've been saying. That is what I've been saying. It don't make sense. And we're not discounting the fact that she felt uncomfortable. You can feel uncomfortable for any reason. But it's the way that she's bringing it up, making it bigger than it is. And, you know, you bringing it up so long afterwards when the camera comes on. Okay? And it's just like, girl, what is your problem? And she was like, he said, all I want to know is you up here talking to, uh, you know, um, um, Karen and telling Karen that, I need to apologize. I need to apologize. And it's like, what did I do that I need to apologize to you for? Okay. So Giselle starts to talk and see, I cannot stand when people want to do this. Okay. Giselle went all the way back to the beginning. Baby, we don't need all of that backstory because we already know it. We don't need all of that. And that's what was frustrating Chris. Okay, because he's like, okay, fine, we got that. But I'm talking, okay? Okay, well, why don't you get to the point? Well, I'm trying to get there. Well, hurry it up. Because at the end of the day, we here for you to just answer the simple question. What do he need to apologize to you about? Okay, what do he need to apologize to you about? And you have not gotten there. Because he said, and he got so pissed, and he said, because this has um, cost me, you, you messed up my family, you got people... And my friends and, and, and making me lose business and all of this stuff. And he just got so freaking mad. And I am not mad that he was screaming at her. I am not mad that he raised his voice at her. And it's not just because it's Giselle. It's because of the seriousness of the situation. I don't care if it was any of them other women that was on the stage. And if he would have raised his voice because if they would have did the same thing, it would have been needed. It would have been okay with me. Because you're going to have to, what did I do that I need to apologize for? Spit it out. I don't need you to think of it by you going back and then want to come back from the past and keep on reiterating this or whatever. Give me the point. Get to the point, baby. Okay? Girl, when just, um, Candace said, because you bitch ass gutter snipe. <laughs> Shout out to Iyanla. Because that was the first time I had ever heard that word was on Iyanla Fix My Life when she was up there with Nefertiri, a.k.a. Um, Nephi, that was Keisha Cole's uh, uh, sister. And she said, you up here acting like a gutter snipe? <laughs> I said, whoo, girl, they went there and I was here for it. Chris was so mad and I feel so bad for him. So basically, we get up into this whole thing and it's semantics. Girl, at the end of the day, Giselle is a liar. Giselle put on, um, basically made it worse than what it was. And she don't know how to choose her words right. You sitting up there telling somebody that they did something to you instead of saying they made you feel a way. That's what it is. And if that's the case, okay, fine. And Chris accepted that. I get that. If I made you feel a way... That wasn't the intent. But then we get into some of the things. All of a sudden, it goes from, you know, he tells me, let's go into my room. And I take him into the room. And the door is closed. And, and, and he was drunk and all of this stuff. And I'm saying, so now we're adding more to the story. Now we're going to put Kyle into it and acting as if he knows some stuff. And Chris like, well, bitch, your friend wasn't even there. So how would he know? Because nobody was there. What is going on? It was just really stupid at this point. And I felt, again, so bad for him because Giselle did all of this running around in a circle and acting like you can't understand. You acting like you can't understand why this man will feel the way that he feels. Why this man did not want to talk to you at her party in the finale. Because like he said, he did not want them to make it appear that he is admitting that he did something wrong because he did not do anything wrong. Okay. I don't care what nobody say. He didn't do anything wrong. And if he made that lady uncomfortable, he, if he, she would have came to him and came to Candace right when it happened, I'm pretty sure Chris would have said, I apologize. That wasn't my intent. You know, no harm, no foul. And it would have been over and done with. But like everybody keeps saying, and Chris says, and Candace says, and I said, you wait until the cameras come on in a situation with Ashley to bring it up. But you said that you, your, your friend, that you was going to tell her. You was going to tell her, but you didn't tell her right then and there. You waited months later to tell her when somebody else bring up something. And then this whole situation about um, Ashley. 
actually talking about something where I didn't know, you know, that um what the situation was or behind the DM and all of that stuff or whatever, because he worked at the W. Baby Chris came out and said that yeah, he she already knew that she he worked there. So that was a lie. And I was like, wow, and mind you, this came out on internet, on Twitter, whatever. I was like, damn. Okay. So everybody's just lying on this man, trying to make him seem uh, the situation seems worse than it is, okay? And, you know, at one point, Candace basically cussed Giselle out. Because I'm not going to go into it. It don't need to be going too deep into it because we didn't did it this all this this whole um, season. And it's not changing a lot of our opinions, okay? I feel as though Giselle did not do anything to make the situation better and change a lot of people's opinions about the whole situation on her part during this reunion, okay, from what we felt during the season. And if it did, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting because I want to know how, you know. Um, meanwhile, in that whole process, Candace said, basically, you get your ass up here and you destroy families and you act like, you know, basically using, because you look white, because the one that look white or whatever and using your skin color, bitch, she brought a whiteness and your proximity to whiteness or whatever, using it as a privilege to get away with stuff and all this stuff, whatever. And here go all the light skins. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, see. When just um, when Candace read Giselle with that read, I'm, I'm not finna say it verbatim because I can't get it verbatim, but I do know she said whiteness, called her white looking with her white looking ass up on this. <laughs> it was funny to me. It was funny to me. And you want to know why it's funny to me? Because it's colorism that we've been talking about. And then they tried to flip it on Candace and make it seem as though Candace was wrong for saying what she said because she said white looking. And basically, okay, if you, because Wendy even said, you know, you my girl, I understand where you're coming from, but maybe you should choose your words a little bit better. And she said, I know what I was talking about. And thank you for saying that. And see how she took it from Wendy, because Wendy understood. But she said, girl, let me tell you something. I meant exactly what I said. And I understood exactly what Candace said. And I understood exactly why she used the words that she used. Because at the end of the day, since you're talking about some, ain't nobody bringing up skin color. How you going to call this black woman white or whatever? Because technically speaking if your skin look at your skin tone okay what she should have said is your light skin privilege if it'd be better your light skin privilege because throughout all this fucking show since season one Giselle has been able to get away with so much shit it has not been punished, has not been brought to the floor, has not been demoted, has not been, you know, uh, uh, put on pause or anything. She has gotten away with so much stuff. And now that it's being brought to her, it's a problem that somebody is calling her out and saying that her light skinnedness just because they use the word white. But baby, that's just what it is. Oh, so you, you, you did not understand what we said when we talked about colorism. And that's Ashley coming up in here. And I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. First of all, what disgusts me about that whole colorism shit, and I have forgot about this until I saw it, Giselle got her 50-something-year-old ass up here and sat up on that couch and acting like she didn't understand what Candace was saying when she gave that example. When your own father is part of the civil, civil rights era, right? But he did some questionable shit that was on the same line of how Giselle acts as well. And I didn't I didn't read up on that. And I said, oh, it's understandable. Y'all gotta go read up on it. Okay, I'm not fanish yourself, but I saw that shit. They put all of it out. I said, oh, no wonder why. The apple don't fall too far from the goddamn tree. Okay. Meanwhile, and that's probably why he was upset at the fact that you know Giselle got back with Jamal Bryan. Not just because he was a cheater, but y'all remember that. All right, moving on from that. Also, Miss Ashley, for you to get up in your feelings and say that it ain't right or whatever, that she said what she said, and that basically the little conversation that y'all had on colorism didn't mean nothing. Girl, you need to shut your mouth up. You need to shut your mouth up because you still truly feel like you don't do nothing wrong as well. You would say something like that when truth be told, truth be told, you've been acting like a Karen this whole freaking season. And that's why Chris said, that's the reason why I cussed your ass out at her party because she did not, he didn't want to take the, the, the situation in the, um, the spotlight off of Candace. 
But you want to keep on coming over there talking about something. We grown. I can do this. Very much like a goddamn Karen. So, of course, you will voice your opinion about something that you don't agree with. And um, your light skin privilege has gotten you and skated you throughout this whole damn show. Uh, uh, Mia, from the short time that she been on here. Freaking Karen. Karen, I mean, Karen ain't that, you know, she ain't as light as everybody else, but she up in there, okay? But at least she don't cause that much messy shit, you know? And Giselle, bitch, all of y'all, all of y'all. And see, and Robin as well. And it didn't make it no better when the light-skinned crew did that little TikTok and shit or whatever. So, hey, it is what it is. I'm just sitting here like, girl, get the fuck up out of here. Chris said, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. He ain't getting no real vindication. But, Chris, the real people we know and we on your side. Baby, this part three going on a little bit too long. I really don't care no more. <laughs> they get into some little fun stuff. Um, Talking about what happened in Mexico. Wendy said, ain't nothing happened in Mexico besides the fact that they were showing each other their vaginas. Karen don't like to be called her boobs to be... She don't like her boobs to be... Her breasts to be called titties. She said, titties are for dogs. And you might as well have called them udders if that's the case. I said, I never knew that. Now, I'm going to have to go look that up. Because <laughs> I call them titties, boobs, all that stuff. So, hey, it is what it is. Maybe it's because she's a little bit older. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, What else? The whole situation about Karen cheating and all this stuff and how does uh ray feel about it ray said that the whole season was disgusting and every woman on here this this was a disgusting season with all the stuff that was going on and you know karen don't usually get down like that no more but she had to get up in there and do what she had to do and he was disappointed in all the ladies okay and truth be told what he said ain't I mean, your wife do get down and dirty when at, in just about every season. But what he was saying was true. It, it was disgusting this season with the allegations, with the, you know, innuendos, with the rumors, all of that stuff on everybody's part. Um, and then, you know, Karen was like, but no, answer the question where he said, how do you feel about the actual allegations of the affair? He said it's bullshit. Okay, that's basically it. Um, then Robin wanted to get up there and talk about the whole situation of Karen, you know, trying to basically say that Juan is, was, was, was Karen implying that Juan was trying to sexually assault her when he, when she said that, um, when she said that Juan grabbed her so tight or hugged her so tight that, you know, her breast was hitting her bird of aid and all that stuff or whatever. So... I feel she was like, because, you know, we just had a little conversation about this and the whole situation with Chris and, you know, reputations. I said, baby, you don't need to bring up anything about reputations because one reputation has already been to the gutter, to the gutter and down below the street. OK, that's just what it is. But at the end of the day, of course, Karen said, I'm pretty sure she's going to say she's not saying that he sexually assaulted her, which technically speaking that's not a sexual assault if he just grabbed her real tight. Did he fill up on her? He just hugs her a little bit too tight. That's just what it is. I don't know. It is in this shit. That's just all I want to say. And just like I said, Karen said she wasn't saying that Juan sexually assaulted her. She just said that he needs to keep his hands to himself. Anyway, girl... The men leave. Oh, excuse me. The men leave and then they put on Candace's song, Insecure. They dance to it and it goes off. And it goes into like five minutes of this shit with uh, Robin. Did I watch it? No. But anyway, that was the reunion. Baby, we are finally done with the Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm pretty sure y'all can tell from part one to part two to part three had the energy that I just gave y'all in this review just then went down because when I tell you I am over it and I need a break from them I am over it and I need a break and I'm glad that it's done but y'all tell me how y'all felt because truth be told I really do feel like part three didn't need to be as long as it was part three didn't even bring what they needed it to bring the only part that I was interested in was the whole situation with Chris and Giselle confronting each other and that was it that was it. Other than that, we did not need an hour and a half for this shit, to be quite honest. But y'all tell me how y'all felt. I'll see y'all later. Peace.
Gotta go watch Candy and um, SWV.